A double up, Lord! Alright, if you're seeing this, that means that the world didn't end during the solar eclipse. Congratulations, you made it. The top 10 solar eclipse Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Let's go! Before we crack right into the top 10, we've got just a few honorable mentions. Look, there's only 13 cards in this criteria. We're literally going off of any card that has solar or eclipse in the card name. Take that as you will. Well, we've got three honorable mentions. We've got Solar Ray, Solar Windjammer, and Book of Eclipse. All lackluster, forgettable, and irrelevant cards. But let's crack right into the top 10. At number 10, baby, we've got Cosmo Dark Eclipser. I'm going to keep it real with you. I know less than nothing about the Cosmo archetype. Never got into Star Wars like that. It's not Dark Destroyer, I know that much. And it's clearly past its time of being relevant, as it counters a mechanic that's less relevant than... You know, I'm not, I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> tea, 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 tea. Charging right into number 9, no pun intended, we've got Battery Man Solar. Easily one of the best Battery Man cards for anything but a Battery Man deck. Battery Man Solar finds home comfortably in generic Thunder-type decks as the adopted child of the Hunter family. It's overall a great card in that aspect, offering an in-theme foolish burial and added field presence. Shocking, I know. Number 8, we're heating things up, Gen X Solar. I'm probably biased on putting Gen X Solar above Battery Man and Cosmo. You stupid! However, I firmly believe that when we get Repair Gen X Controller in Terminal Revenge later this year, Gen X Solar will solidify itself as, as, as not only a staple in dedicated Gen X build, but potentially create a respectable rogue strategy for the tournament scene. Number 7, Solar Flare Dragon. Look, hear me out. I understand that Solar Flare Dragon never really saw extensive competitive success, but the lockdown of controlling two of these spicy little noodles? This is a certified hood classic. <laughs> Planting ourselves at number six, we've got Super Solar Nutrient. This card screams Plant Synchro. This card also screams Nursing Home. I'm him. I've been him. I will continue to be him. Okay, Boomer. Don't get me wrong, I like Plant Synchro, and I'd love to see a modern iteration of the deck take off. And Super Solar Nutrient kind of finds itself comfortably in the middle of a top 10 like this. Number 5, we're breaking into the top 5, baby. Book of Lunar Eclipse. It's Book of Moon, a la Twin Twisters. What more can you say? Yes, it's lost some relevance just like Book of Moon with the advent of Link Monsters. It may not be Triple Book of Moon, but 2 is always better than 1. Oh, we made quick work of this. We're down to number four, Solar Recharge, another certified banger. And this one has surprisingly retained some relevance, not only in mill-focused decks, but any deck that can benefit from dumping two cards from the top deck. Check it out, this is definitely what Christians look like during the totality, am I right? Spoiler alert, the top three speaks volumes about how out of touch I am with the modern game. Huh? So take that as you will. Mech Knight Indigo Eclipse gets the top three started off in the right way. I'm vaguely familiar with Mech Knights as an archetype, and if I'm not mistaken, their best feature is how well they integrate with other decks, and how mid they are operating solo. Indigo Eclipse seems pretty alright as a standalone card, however, this card reeks of early Link format, when everyone was so worried about the space on the field for Link Zones. We were all naive back then. Foolish even. And we still are. Number two, baby, Drytron Eclipse. My experience and knowledge of Drytron can be summed up with two words. Deck go I did a quick crash course, meaning I did a Google image search of Drytron deck profiles. And Eclipse didn't appear in a single one. That being said, I think it's safe to assume that it's probably one of the weaker cards of the archetype, but reading its effects, it blows like half the list out of the water just by comparison. And here we are, baby, number one, the totality of this list, if you will. Look, it's a cop-out. Eclipse Wyvern. But the only banned card in this group had to be number one. I mean, come on. Chaos Dragons, Twilight Dragons, Racial Equality Dragons, whatever you feel most comfortable calling them. I'm even less familiar with them than Drytron. But if they've got a banned card, that means good, I guess. 
And again, ladies and gentlemen, I want to congratulate you on making it through the end of the world, through the totality and through the solar eclipse. We're not going to see the next totality until about 20 45 so we're gonna see you in about 20 years when we do this once more maybe we'll have a few more cards to add to the list but as always if you like the video don't forget to drop a big thumbs up it's always greatly appreciated as always ladies and gentlemen and until next time this has been purple pineapple tv signing off